Uh, David Johnson here. I am the tapestry instructor here at Longmont Yarn and have been teaching classes in person and Zoom over the last year and a half. Uh, you know, I am in love with tapestry. I have been weaving tapestry Oh, since about 1980 and, and fiber in general that, that, you know, going back to those good old days, those of you that remember the late 60s, I remember that first fiber piece happening then. But um, I love teaching and, uh, you know, that sort of connection to uh, people. I love talking about craft. And, you know, so I, I guess for me, you know, it's not just about making an object, but it's about bringing yourself to that object and that, that it's more than just an object. I think that they're, you know, making things, it's like, sometimes I like to call it the ultimate object, that it feeds you physically and spiritually and emotionally and it looks nice. And so, you know, that, that, that is a real important part of my class too, just talking about that creative process. But, you know, in order to make something, you, you know, we need to learn how to make that thing. And, you know, a lot of times I think about weaving and anything else is like uh, learning anything. You know, it's like you learn your ABCs, you learn how to spell words, you learn how to put words together to make a sentence. And then somehow these sentences come together in a way to tell a story. So in my, my class that I offer here through Longmont, it's three um, sessions, yeah, each session two weeks apart. And um, session one deals with technique, learning to weave. This class is open to all levels of experience um, that uh, a brand new weaver or brand new uh, somebody without a weaving experience or working with tapestry um, certainly can start here. But also those of you that perhaps have been working for quite some time in tapestry will certainly glean a lot of information out of what I have to say. Um, in terms of the techniques that I'll be teaching, um, within tapestry, the, the, the two things that I really love working with are A, plain weave, and B, sumac. Um, plain weave, most of you will be familiar with in terms of traditional um, rug making, either uh, Navajo rugs or perhaps uh, kalims from the Middle East, you know, that tend to be more sort of geometric and, orga and, uh, and uh, architectural in the way that they are versus you know, sumac weaving, which the, the weaving on the wall here you'll see is a sumac weave, which literally allows you to paint with yarn. It, it, it allows a much more sort of organic approach to, to working and weaving. Um, you know, one of the things about tapestry is that it tends to be a little bit of a time commitment. And so to allow yourself to have that more sort of um, organic approach to it, to not have it all planned out, to you know, um, let things happen in a more sort of spontaneous way, you know, can really be enriching. Th that you're you're making creative decisions all the way down the piece as you're working along, and so um, you know, in this class, I'm going to talk both ways. You know, the other side of the coin is, and you know, within the uh, tapestry tradi tradition is that if you want to weave something realistic and you want to make it look like what it looks like, for example, the bluebird in the, the composition here or the irises in this composition, you know, I had to have a, a predetermined design that I could put behind my warp and kind of fill it in as, as, I, as I wove along to be able to to depict those. But then a lot of the sort of color blending, color shading things that are happening in this composition are really me with colors all around me and picking up colors and making decisions, you know, on the spot and, and, and just really kind of having fun with that approach. Um, oftentimes technique really um, um, tells you 
and aids what you can do as a tapestry weaver or as a weaver. That, that uh, there are things that weavers can do that painters have a very difficult time doing. Um, for example, um, you know, we all are familiar with the famous painting um, by Seurat in the park, you know, the pointless piece that is at the, actually at the Chicago Art Institute. Apparently they just reframed it. I was reading a story about it this, this morning. But, uh, you know, that sort of pointillism, that dot pattern, a painter having to make each one of those individual dots with a brush. But we as weavers, depending on the orders that we put yarns into our weavings, perhaps, you know, we are able to generate a dot pattern in a way that really is not labor intensive to do. Um, I love impressionism in painting. And impressionism meaning, you know, that sort of being able to see uh, the artist's brush in the work. And in sumac weaving, certainly, you can see the artist's hand in the work. The, um, I'm gonna hold this close. You can see that sort of textural and knotted pattern that happens in there. For me, that just creates a, a, an incredibly rich surface. Um, you know, that as you, you all know, textiles say, touch me. I want you to experience me, not just in a visual way, but experience me in a, in a tactile sort of a way. Um, you know, I think that that's, that's part of the reason why I am a paint or a, a weaver too. You know, that I hold color in my hands and I can almost feel that color as I'm weaving with it. You know, I like painting and painting's okay and I, it's fun for me, but to really just think about my hands and fingers as tools and allow, that sort of primary experience with materials to be the main thing that uh, you know, stimulates me. I, I, I totally love that. Um, so you say, well, what are, what are we going to be able to do in terms of, you know, what do we get with this workshop? Um, these are looms that I build. These are what I call my Home Depot specials. And with your um, registration for this class and fee for this class, you will receive one of these looms. You'll receive a backing board that is black that fits on the back of this that allows you to put your cartoon on it. You will receive a selection of yarns that are put together by Longmont Yarn here at the store of, of colored yarns. Medium weight worsted wools are, are typically what I use and that's what I suggest to have here. Um, handout, everything you need is included. So um, the one thing that is kind of required with this is that you, um, you when you make a decision to, to do this class, to give us a little bit of lead time to be able to ship this loom to you. Um, the class that is coming up starting on February 5 now is, you know, just two and a half weeks out. And in fact, you know, there's time for these to be shipped, but right now we're kind of down to crunch time. I know that that Longmont Yarn will be sending out these looms um, ASAP in this week to be able to, to get these to folks, especially when we've got folks all over the country. Um, you know, it's important to have a little bit of a lead time to get these to you. Um, so I mentioned class one technique. I'm falling back where class two is about design. And design incorporates this idea of, of the process, you know, I work in a linear way, meaning, and what weaving is, is that you start at the bottom and you weave to the top. And it's kind of like a diary, you know, that you do this and this and this and this, and each day something new happens. Maybe it's even influenced on how you're feeling that day or what you're thinking about. I know a lot of artists that are weaving tapestry think about you know their weavings as diaries um, so and especially again this this process of, of weaving taking a while to do you know it, it allows you to to have fun with that so you'll hear me talk about you know this sort of spontaneous use of design in relationship to telling a story with your weaving class three deals with finishing techniques and um, also we will Learn how to rewarp your loom. The loom that's being sent to you can be used over and over again. Um, 
not complicated to, to rewarp this loom and, and certainly that's an advantage to you um, if you want to continue on with, with this, this technique. At some point, you're probably um, taking a step to purchasing something beyond the, the student loom here, but these looms are totally functional in their nature. You think about Navajo people and just the basic looms that, that they use. Um, so, uh, you know, that's a technique is, or tools are at a minimum. So, and I kind of like that again. So, any questions? I don't think so. I think you've hit them all on the head. Thank you so much, David. Appreciate it. We're looking forward to class. Well, and I'm looking forward to teaching again. Always love it. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks everybody for joining us. Okay. Hope we see you in class. Thanks.